treat for your eyes as well as the deck. Let's bring you an update to Dark Magician. So of course this would be the first profile that I bring you guys post Battles of Chaos which would of course be Dark Magician. We got some brand new cards that really take this deck up a level and at the end I will show you two one card combos that get you into your boss monster. It is crazy consistent and I absolutely love it. With all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe so you do not miss out on any upcoming content. If you get this video to at least 50 likes in the first 24 hours, I will be more than happy to bring you a test time video with this deck so you can see its consistency and all of the plays it can make. With all of that out of the way, let's dive head first into today's profile of Dark Magician. So, for the vanilla lineup, but also the one of lineup, I kind of decided to go on this particular profile with the anniversary arts, considering that that is the only type of artwork that all of four of these, or all three of these cards can share. Um, so I went with that. It is basically is what it is. You play the one Dark Magician girl for the minimal effect to trigger off the Dark Magicians, but also the main effect that it can lead you into, if you wanted to, synchro plays, or of course, additional draws off of your soul servant. We've then got the two Dark Magician and the one Red Eyes. It is kind of considered that maybe with Skill Drain you could play a version which is Skill Drain Reliant and then you keep bringing back Dark Magician off of Eternal Soul Circle to banish and interrupt. Um, but for now we're going with the power plays to get to Dragoon and then try and win the game off the back of that as well uh, and go from there. So that's it for those, no surprise on the ratios. And then of course we've got Triple Magician Souls. Again, no surprise on this card. This is probably single-handedly the best Dark Magician card we own on its own for the pure fact that it, it can lead you to draws, it can lead you to either a Dark Magician or a Dark Magician Girl. Um, and off of the back of that, it then opens up many more options for you. Then the best card we received in this set, and you're probably going to get, oh, I'm probably going to get a bit of hate for this because I'm only playing two, is two Illusion of Chaos. Now the reason I'm only playing two is I'm combining two of that and one of the Soravis. The Soravis is actually incredibly important for the pure fact that you get to this. Um, it protects all of your stuff from Veilers and Imperms going forward. So it means that if you get to your Soravis and you get to that by opening up your uh, Preparation of Rites, it can then protect your souls if you decide to start sending stuff to draw. It can protect your Rod Search. It can also protect, spoiler, your uh, Diviner of the Herald search. And off the back of that as well, it does protect your Verte. Keep, keeping in mind that Verte's biggest weakness is all going to be cards that target it. Stuff like Imperm and Veiler, you're going to be able to go right, Saravas, protect it, and still get your boss monster out. Now the reason I've only gone with two Illusion of Chaos is because there are so many different ways of actually getting to him in this particular build. So we're playing two Preparation of Rites, we're then playing two Diviner of the Herald which ultimately lead to Illusion of Chaos. Now I'm going to do a bit more testing to see if I want to go up to three or not, but right now from every bit of testing I've done, two has been perfect for me. And I'll definitely advise you if you are a Dark Magician player to pick up a third just in case, um, but right now I'm aiming to get the second Starlight and then I might consider going for a third, um, but for now two is working perfectly fine for me. Then for the normal summons of the deck, we've got two Rods and two Diviners. Now this is something that I was playing around with and a lot of people have kind of seen different builds and options and ideally the Diviner was leading you to a uh, Zolkin Crystal Wing play or if you were to play the Skill Drain version, I highly advise playing the Geo Mathmet Final Sigma because the best thing about that is Diviner would then be a one card um, Geo Mathmet. And then if you flip Skill Drain, the best thing about the Geo Mathmet is he's completely unaffected while in the extra monster zone. So it means your opponent has to get a monster on the board that is 3k or more and it can't use its effect, whereas the Geo Mathmet Final Sigma sits there and says, I'm unaffected by everything, so unless you've got a Kaiju, or unless you've got the ability to get stronger than me, I'm going to be able to sit here. Like, I'm unaffected by Droplets, I'm unaffected by Imperms, we're good to roll. 
Now the two routes you've got is obviously Magician's Rod will be your normal summon if you want to get into your spells and your back row, and the Diviner is going to be there as not only a very quick, easy, normal summon search into Illusion of Chaos, but going second can be a very nice interruption that not a lot of people are prepared for. So when you look at stuff like Sword Soul, if you normal summon your Diviner, and of course you do have Extenders in your hand, rather than needing to search out your Illusion of Chaos, you can send the Tiss. That then becomes a pop. So if you're trying to bait out something like a um, Punishment, or if you're trying to bait out something like a... Um, Blackout as well. You can then send them the Tiss to target that to get rid of it. Um, or if you're trying to bait out an Appalooza to make it weak enough, anything along those lines, you get to use that as an additional effect to pop a card um, and then go from there. The fact that it is a level or it would become a level six is quite important if you go down the Dark Magician Girl into the Synchro route. I'll explain as I go through why I didn't choose to go for that. For the pure fact that Diviner on her own if she successfully resolves, is a one card Verte. And to me, that route was a lot better and more consistent than being able to go, okay, Souls, send Dark Magician Girl, summon Dark Magician Girl, sink into Geo Mathemet Final Sigma, or sink into Zulkin, set a card, Crystal Wing. Like, you want to be going for your Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. It is your ace monster, but you do need to back it up with other stuff. Continuing on, we do play the one Tomias, the United Dragon. Um, this is a very interesting card, so... With the rest of the deck, it will actually show a little bit more consistency. But the idea behind this is you can send a Dark Magician spell or monster from the field or hand to the grave to special summon this card. It then has the effect that it can fusion summon any fusion monster as long as you use a spell caster. So the idea is that it doesn't need to use itself, but if it does use itself and Dark Magician, it gives you a Dragoon. If it uses um, two spell casters, as long as one of them is a Dark Magician girl or a Dark Magician, it gets you into the Dark Magicians. If you want to, you can also play the generic dragon that we got, I believe, in Breakers of Shadow, um, or Bode, sorry, Burst of Destiny, where it requires a dragon and a spellcaster. So that's the most generic card you can go for, and it's if your opponent special summons a monster via its own effect, or special summons another one via another monster's effect, so basically Sword Souls, um, you get to banish the same types, which is really, really cool. Uh, very specific. But it does give you a very easy option because right now to get the best out of this you do need to end up having a Dark Magician or a Dark Magician Girl in hand or field. Keep in mind as well this is searchable by Illusion of Chaos. Off the back of that as well um, you do get the ability to go for your Apprentice Illusion. And the best thing with the Apprentice Illusion as well is for the pure fact that she lists Dark Magician in her text. So she is searchable, she is a free level 6 extender, she searches you out a Dark Magician, she puts any card you want into the graveyard and allows you to continue to play off the back of that as well. So it does give you a couple of different options to kind of move around and play around with it uh, and kind of gives you an additional extender. So if you still wanted to go for the Synchro play, you could definitely rely on this a little bit more uh, and kind of move from there that bit better. Moving on as well, um, you get to go for... A Dogmatica package. Now I know a lot of you are going to be like, whoa, why are you playing a Dogmatica package? And the reason I say this, and I'll show you the spells as well because we are still playing two Nadir before I show you the last monster. The reason I say this is Nadir Servant is a one card power card. Uh, and what I mean by that is if you were to go first and your opponents opened up the nuts of hand traps and they stop you, stop you, stop you, stop you, you can still play that last Nadir Servant and that Nadir Servant is going to set you up at the very least an Ecclesia with a window or at the base minimum will set you up an Ecclesia, uh, sorry, will set you up a window. Off the back of that as well, being able to set up a window, the best thing about Nadir Servant is ideally you can still activate this after you've made Verte. And what I mean by that is you activate this, you send the App Clone, the App Clone gives you the search in the ditch, you search out Felidius or Fleur de Ries rather than Ecclesia, and then that will allow you to set your um, Schism. That gives you Dragoon backed up with Winder, and then you've also got a Felidius should you want to extend during your turn or during your opponent's turn to then ultimately lead you to an OTK the next turn because Goon's just going to go, cool, uh, blow up, blow up, blow up, and then you've got a uh, Fleur de Ries, you've got a Winder, and you can go from there. So to me, this is still just one of them cards, even at two, where you fall back on it. It's one of them ones that you obviously don't want to start your turn with. It can get a little bit crunchy if you're like, right, okay, well, I've opened up Ecclesia, but I've got route to Verte. You always go to the Verte route, but opening up Nadir over anything else gives you a lot better options. Uh, I would consider actually cutting Ecclesia, but right now I'm using Ecclesia to also get me to a route of punishment because if I wanted to play Skill Drain or if I'm playing stuff like Gozen and anything like that, I do have that ability of using punishment to kind of clear two cards off my, that my opponent needs on the board, uh, and that does give you many other options. 
Now the last card, and again, I'll show you the spells that go with it for the pure fact that I'm going to get ridiculed for it, but you have to hear me out before you switch off. Now, I've played this a couple of times before, and now we have even more times of making it successful, and that is two the true name and one obelisk. Now, obelisk can arguably be removed completely, and you just rely on the true name, but the way I saw it is, if I needed an extender, the true name not only provides me with the ability of adding any particular card from my deck to my hand, as long as I have successfully stacked it with Magician Circle, but it also then gives me a free extender. That free extender can then become an effect monster that can nuke my opponent's board or becomes a 4k beta that lets me deal with a golden lord that could be at 3500 or can let me deal with any particular boss monster that is 3000 or more. Keep in mind that, for example, if your opponent does not stop this with Dragoon and you summon this out and Dragoon's still on 3k, you can just go to battle phase, this guy can just punch Dragoon in the face and then you get to go off the next turn or, or in main phase 2. Keep in mind as well, so for example, Rod plus True Name is a two card combo that gets you into Verte and in theory can add any of the top three cards you reveal off of Magician Circle. That can lead you into any Dark Magician card should you stack it with Soul Servant. Keep in mind as well, Illusion of Chaos also stacks your deck. So you're playing two copies of Illusion of Chaos, two Preparations of Riots, two Divine of the Herald straight away. That is six ways, in theory, of getting the ability to stack your deck. And then we are playing two Circles and three Soul Servant, which give you a total of 11 cards that give you access in order to stack your deck correctly to make sure the true name will always resolve. It is a personal tech, it is free spaces in a deck where a lot of people will main skill drain or gozen or go for imperms or anything like that. So it is a massive flex spot. But like I said to you, the reason I play it is for the pure fact that if I open up two of these, but I've got a way to get to Magician Souls, free draw fodder, easy. If I open up the Obelisk, I can put it back to the top of deck with Illusion of Chaos. Not the ideal scenario, but is something that can happen. If I do go first, this becomes a free extender to go into Verte. If I don't go first and I go second, this becomes a free boss on the board that can then help me attack and do damage or win into game. Moving on to the spells in permanent, we are playing Triple Soul Servant. Uh, there are some times where you might have to sacrifice the secondary draw at the end of the turn after you have completed the Verte combo and take that one single draw. But that one single draw can lead you into Illusion of Chaos, your Magician Souls, your Tomias Dragon, or of course your Apprentice. So there's a lot of different ways to go from there. One thing I didn't mention about Apprentice is it's so good that if your opponent Dark Rulers and forgets that that card's even being played or that you even play it, it does allow you to then stack up your Dragoon. So your Dragoon can end up going, I believe, to 6k, um, but it can also go to base 5k if it has been negated with Dark Ruler or Droplets or anything like that. Again, something that not a lot of people are playing, and I understand why. I've gone with two Dark Magical Circle, but the reason I've gone with this is for the pure fact that I do like the idea of the true name. So I want to be able to stack my deck where at all possible. Now, obviously, if I open up a copy, great. Um, if I get to two copies, it's just easy discard fodder for off of the back of the Tamias Dragon or off of the back of Magician Souls, and it just comes down to personal preference. Keep in mind as well that if you do go the skill drain route, this is going to be one of your more important cards because that allows you to get rid of all of these cards that would originally be boss monsters that are just stronger than a Dark Magician but now can be targeted because you've activated skill drain. Two preparation of rights, like I said, um, in theory, the idea is that the first target you search or the first target you get to will be your Illusion of Chaos. You've also got the ability to get to the Saravus. Keep in mind, Saravus is a dragon, so using Magicalized Fusion can banish it from the graveyard to give you your Dragoon, um, and it just kind of works as much as it needs to. If I feel I need to, I'll bump it up to three, but ultimately, at the moment, a two, two, and a one ratio is working out really, really nice for me, um, and kind of go from there. Then, of course, the last Dark Magician spell card itself specifically is um, Salvation. This is one of the go-tos you go to in order to activate this, set your Eternal Soul. It does give you a guaranteed draw because if you make Soul Servants, you will be sending a Field Spell. It's very rare that you want to keep it on the board. Um, the downside of it is, or what I'm finding out more times than not, is that with my Rod, I'm going for Servant or I'm going for Circle, and then hoping that I'm getting this off the top, which is absolutely fine because then it sets you up your Eternal Soul. The last two odds of the spells I went with is Double Forbidden Droplet. I had two spaces in the deck. I was originally maining Skill Drain. And the way I saw it was, I would rather, if I was going to main anything, I'd rather main Gozen. But then off of the back of that as well, when you consider it, Skill Drain, Gozen, and Forbidden Chalice are probably the worst cards for our worst matchup. And I feel our worst matchup would probably be Eldritch. And the reason I say that is for the pure fact that they can play Gozen, they can play um, Skill Drain, they can play 
uh, a Golden Lord which makes it 3,500. So we kind of have an okay matchup with them. The issue is, if we were main in Skilled Ray, if we were main in Gozen, it wouldn't actually do anything. If you wanted to, and you wanted to go with more set back row and break board that way, these would easily be your Gozens or your Skill Drains for specific matchups, probably more Gozen than anything, against stuff like Sword Soul, um, against stuff like what I would expect to be in the meta going forward as well. Um, Chalices, the reason I've got these in here over anything else is because it's so good right now when you're going second. So you can't always guarantee you're going to go first. You need to have some form of play. Now you can just go, right, well, I'm going to use all six cards and I'm going to try and bait out everything I need to. But there are times when a Chalice on a um, Scythe lets you continue playing. A Chalice on a DPE allows you to continue to play. A Chalice on a um, Appalooza lets you continue to play. And sometimes that is more important. The reason I've gone with this over an Imperm is for the pure fact that a lot of people now are waiting to activate anything like DPE or in theory you have to wait until DPE is on the field uh, or another card is on the field to really trigger the DPE. If they're trying to go for Scythlock, they'll try and play around Imperm where it's all they possibly can. Whereas I think Chalice just gives you that additional layer and it puts your opponent under a false sense of security because they're like, okay, draw, standby, main, no Imperm, fine. I'll wait till they put a monster on the board and then I can start triggering my effects, and then they can't imperm me. But if you're holding back a chalice, it actually changes the game so much, and I've seen it. I've been on both receiving and giving end of this. It works so well, and it's one of the best cards this format. I think Ghost Ogre is also a very, very good card this format, um, for the pure fact that, specifically against Dark Magician, it can hurt quite a lot, um, and it can hurt quite a lot against um, the Brave Token engine as well. So... It kind of gives and gives and takes. It's entirely up to you, but these are two easy flex spots. Very small striker package. Like I said, either one of these is on one card Verte. The idea is, obviously, if you engage, you search out drones. If you get drones, you just go drones, Kagari. Kagari adds back drones. Uh, turn Kagari into Kana. Activate drones. Turn drones into Link Spider. Go into Verte, Dragoon, and you've done all of that for one card. So you've still got four more cards to back your goon up with uh, and go from there. And then for the last one, we've got the one Magical Eyes Fusion and the one Red Eyes Fusion. Again, my build is different to the rest out there in the sense that a lot of builds will play free Red Ice Fusion, which is completely fine. But the way I see it is if I'm going to main the free Red Ice Fusion, I've got to kind of be able to compensate by playing stuff like Skill Drain, by playing stuff like Torrential in the main, um, by playing stuff like Gozen for the pure fact that I need to be able to go right Dragoon and still have back row to back it up. Because if I just go Dragoon and then my hand is like a rod. Uh, souls and illusion of chaos like i'm going to use illusion of chaos to bait out a particular hand trap to then activate red ice fusion and then go from there so that's okay but i don't think it's the ideal way of going in this particular build if i wanted to go that route i'd probably cut out the dogmaticas i would possibly cut out um i mean even if i didn't cut out the dogmaticas a red ice fusion plus an idea would be really good because you would go red ice fusion summon out your dragoon protect everything you've got going forward activate nadir Nadir would get you Schism ideally, you'd set the Schism and then your board during your opponent's turn would be a Dragoon plus a Winder um, and that could be really nice as well because you play through stuff like Blackout because they won't be able to target to pop your two cards which is really really nice. So it's something to look into, if you were to do something like that I would probably definitely um, advise maining more Punishments, maining more Torrentials uh, and probably just go for more of a control build so that's where I'd probably ideally say push for Gozens as well. And in doing so, you'd probably end up taking out the true name. Um, you would rely a lot less. I'd probably take out the striker package as well. You'd probably rely a lot less on um, the other one-card power cards in this deck. Speaking of the power cards, we've got the one Punishment, the one Eternal Soul, and the one Schism. Schism is pretty straightforward and simple on that one. Eternal Soul, again, very straightforward. And the Punishment, again, speaks for itself. The idea is that you want to be able to build your board, and if you are going to activate a Punishment, you're probably going to want to rely on that a lot more under a Skill Drain build, for the pure fact that the Punishment doesn't actually clash with Skill Drain, and if you're planning to keep looping your Dark Magician around and around, then um, Skill Drain will be a better route. And I think that's one thing that not only the ban list has done, but the new set has done, is it actually allows you to play a very different versions of Dark Magician, and still be relatively good. So like I said, you've got my version here, which is quite combo orientated because you're playing the Striker engine and the Deer engine. Uh, you've got multiple ways of getting Verte. You've got ways of hard summoning Dragoon as well. And then you've got Control version, which is just Red Eyes Fusion Turbo, protect it with back, uh, back row. Uh, and then off the back of that as well, you do have um, like a ritual build and everything else. So now moving on to the extra deck, we'll start off with the Fusion Monsters because I do only play a few of these. Uh, that might surprise people or may not. 
So, of course, we are playing Double Dragoon and the single, nice and shiny, The Dark Magicians. So, these are the Dark Magician fusions you will go into more times than not. I was thinking about having Dark Magician the Dragon Knight in here, but ultimately I was like, I'm never really going to make it. Like, I don't play enough back row that I want to protect, um, apart from possibly Eternal Soul, and even then, I'd rather go for a Dragoon because the Eternal Soul doesn't affect him anyway. Um, maybe you'd go for a Dragon Knight in a different particular build, but these two are the ideal fusions for you. The other fusions are all coming off the back of Nadir, or um, coming off the back of the Diviner of Herald, and that's of course Apcolone, Windar, and Natis. So like I said, Natis is the interrupter that come, can come off the back of Punishment, um, which gives you a double pop. It can also come off of the back of uh, Diviner as a bait out, uh, and then of course you've got Apcolone and Windar. So it is the very base minimum version of the particular Shadol package, but the idea is you should be getting enough Dark Monsters into the grave, that all you need to do is put the Apcolone in the graveyard, and that is your free window. Um, the Synchro, the, we only play one Synchro, and that's Herald, because you send it off a Divine Art, you search out. Other options for this particular extra day, if you wanted to, are of course the BLS link. Um, you can go into Appalooza, I've shown this before, you can also go into um, Avramax, and then you could increase the Fusion package, or the package for uh, Nadir's as well. It's entirely up to you on how you prefer to play it, but you've also got Soul Kimru, Geomath Mech, and Crystal Wing. This, to me, was the only way that I could fit everything in. And when you see all of the cards I've got in the extra deck, the majority of them are power play cards or their cards that are going to lead you to um, your ideal end goal. Speaking of ideal end goals, let's go over the um, Link Monsters. Now, again, there's something in here that a lot of you are probably going to be like, yo, bro, what are you doing? And I'll explain it as we go. So for the Link ones, we've got the one Artemis. Actually considering cutting Artemis, believe it or not, because... In this particular modernized version of the deck, you should never just have a rod and be like, right, I really need to get rod into the grave. Like, it's very rare that you need to do that. And because we're not relying on the Dogmatica package as much, again, we shouldn't really be able to go, right, okay, normal song rod, turn it into Artemis, and then try and go Dogmatica plays. It can be done, but it's not an ideal route to go, which is why she's still in here for now. But if I feel that I need to get rid of it, I will do. Uh, then, so the striker package, of course, we've got the Kane and we've got the Kagari. Kana can actually win you during time, keep that in mind, because if you keep the drones, you activate drones, turn Kagari, add the drones back, turn Kagari to Kana, activate drones, Kagari, uh, Kana's effect, gain 100 life points. Straight away, that lets you go, yep, yeah, cool, I'm up on life. I'm not saying you stall from that point, but if your opponent stalls you, and it says, right, okay, game three, you're going first, you go, yeah, all right, absolutely fine, and you do somehow manage to open up, you can try and build for the win rather than the draw. And then our last Link 1 is Link Spider. That is right, this is our last Link 1. I know a lot of you are going to be like, yo, bro, where the is the Umduct? Unfortunately, I had to cut it. Now, the reason that I chose to cut it over Link Spider was the pure fact that you need Link Spider for the Striker combo. Now, obviously, in the past, I had enough space to play Umduct and Link Spider, um, and it's very, very difficult to actually have to cut Umduct. But again, the way I saw it is, it would be very, very specific. I would have had to have either opened up Red Eyes Fusion and then still have the ability of Souls and Rod and actually value the back row that I get off of Rod more than just activating Red Eyes Fusion. Um, and then it's also one of the ones where if I open up Red Eyes Fusion but don't have a way to Illusion of Chaos to put it back into the deck, I then use, need to use Magical Eyes Fusion. But then if I'm going to do something like that, I could just rely on the other dragon that I play in the form of Tomias. It's something I'm testing out, it's something I'm trialing, it may or may not work, but we'll see where it goes from there. For the Link 2s, we've got the brand new Dark, the Dark Charmer, Gloomy. Um, this is basically two Dark Monsters, including, um, well, two monsters including a Dark Monster, and it basically allows you to revive a Dark Monster from your opponent's graveyard to your side of the field. If it gets destroyed, you get to add a Dark Monster from the deck. The idea is that the majority of people are going to be playing Dark Monsters, so you can go second, make this with two monsters, and those two monsters will ideally lead you into this, bring back a monster, go into Selene, Selene then revives a spellcaster from the graveyard, use that spellcaster plus your dark, go into access code, your access code in the grave will probably by that point end up having at least two because you have Selene and dark, um, but could possibly have three if not more if you've had to use Link Spider or Kagari or anything like that. Uh, Unga Bunga, Verte, you are going to go into this more times than not. The idea is that once you've officially made one Dragoon off the back of Verte, you're not going to be making a second because you need to use Magical Eyes Fusion. So there's no real need right now to play two Vertes, which is why I've got the Aggression going second and the Backup going second. It's entirely up to you. Like If Axisco is going to win me the game, there's no need me to go Verte. 
Um, and I'm not going to make this go in first because my opponent's not going to have a dark in the grave. This is a card that would be closer to the chop for a second verte than anything, but again comes down to personal preference. And the last two cards is just your boss route. In theory, Axis Code is a two card combo um, when you make it correctly that basically ends up going from Dark to Selene to Axis Code all from two cards because you just need to be able to make Dark and revive a Dark from the graveyard to then get to Selene and obviously have the spell. So it's situational, which is why it's just a basically free link monster route in order to get there. But it is just so powerful in order to go, right, okay, well, here's my 5,300 uh, access code with at least two non-target destructions. Let's go that route. I mean, I don't th know what else you would possibly choose to do as an alternative option. Uh, Dragoon should be able to win you the game outright normally anyway, just by going, cool, Dragoon effect, pop, burn, Dragoon effect, pop, burn. Uh, but then if you can back that up, maybe going into your turn two, then you should be in a much better position. Okay, so this has been a very long video, so I'm going to zoom it out. Um, and I will show you the two one card combos just so that you are clear and precise on exactly where they get you. So one uh, combo one card number one will be your Hornet Drones. And then, then your one card number two will be your Diviner. So this just kind of shows you the importance of both of these cards. So activate Drones. Drones turns into a token and then that token becomes Kagari. Kagari then uses effect to add back the drones. You turn Kagari into Kana. Get used to this because sometimes that 100 life points will make a massive difference. Uh, activate your drones. Spawn it out. Use Kana to gain. Turn your drones into your Link Spider. Link Spider plus your Kana as they are both effect monsters. Verte. Verte's effect. Dump Red Eyes Fusion. Dump Red Eyes. Dump um, Dark Magician. And then you can go, cool, there's my Dragoon. So see, in theory, you'd still then have four more cards to play around with. So at least one of those is going to be a discard. For the back of that, if any of these is a rod, you're then extending your plays and uh, gaining additional backup. Resetting this to go back to our second one card combo, we'll have the exact same end board, but it kind of shows you just the consistency of what else you can do. So you normal summon your Diviner. Diviner's effect will send a Herald of the Art Light. Herald of the Art Light's effect will then go off to add you an Illusion of Chaos. And before you go, wait, you need a card to put back, you can just put back the Illusion of Chaos. Easy as that. So you add the Illusion of Chaos, you reveal said Illusion of Chaos, and you add from your deck to the hand. As you've already used a starter, your Magician Souls. There we go, you put Illusion of Chaos back to the top of the deck. You use Magician Souls effect. This one I would actually, if you're going for the Synchro play, then you send Dark Magician, you send Dark Magician Girl regardless. But if you're going for the Synchro play, you bring back Dark Magician Girl so that you can sync into a Sulkin or a 12. In this scenario, if you've got more spells and traps, you bring down Souls because it's still going to give you the same end board. It's just if you've got dead spells or traps or anything like that, you can get rid of them and get additional draws. So you've still got four more cards to play with. You link these together. You do Unga Bunga, um, Verte, Verte Effect, and then Goon. Now, obviously, if you add to that combo with Diviner, an Illusion of Chaos, a Preparation of Rights, or of course a um, Saravus, you protect this from being Impermed and Valid, which is ideally the only thing your opponent can do, because Verte cannot be ashed. Anyway, that is it ladies and gentlemen, I'm still working really really hard on this deck in the background. Like I said, there are so many different versions, variations and everything, that my extra deck started out as like a 20 card extra deck, I played with everything, I kind of saw what I was getting to more consistently, um, and then I was like, right, okay, well, this isn't giving me the outcome I want, or this isn't going the route that I want, so I'm going to change this up and, and go a different play. Uh, and it worked out nicely for me, so it's definitely something to be looking into, um, and definitely something to kind of keep your mind open for as well. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this profile. I hope it's given you as much information as possible, and I hope you can see the competitive edge that it does have um, on everything else, just to kind of see where it can go. Now, there are still um, areas of flexibility and there are still areas of weakness that this deck will have but it's going to be interesting to see how this deck can evolve and how this deck goes forward um, in this upcoming format anyway thank you so much for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe share like i said at the start if you get this video up to at least 50 likes i will bring you a test hand video going in depth as much as possible for this build as absolutely always guys stay safe and of course happy dueling mm -hmm.